Hi, welcome to the Seasons of Living. Today we have a special interview with my daughter and best friend Margaret. She is home from Texas A&M. She is 21 years old and she has not had to have an antibiotic. We're going to interview her and ask her questions about growing up on a farm and ask her um, her opinion now that she's grown <laughs> about uh, growing up with raw milk and growing her own food. And one of the main reasons I want to interview her is she is 21 years old and she has not had to have an antibiotic. So I think that's pretty remarkable and she won an award in high school for not missing any days of school. So I thought we would share a little bit about uh, why we thought that she was so healthy. She does have a younger brother that's 18 and he is just as healthy as she is. So, um, But we do have three older brothers that um, the you know, they've not been quite as healthy as she has, right? Yep. But they grew up, uh, spent a lot of the childhood in Dallas. So anyway, I'm going to ask her a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Margaret, let's start mm -hmm. with when we moved from Dallas area to the Texas Hill Country when you were about three years old. So um, do you remember that move? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like we were thrown from traffic and <laughs> neighbors to absolutely out in the country. And you spent almost 100% of your time except for sleeping when you stay outside playing. Especially when we lived in a travel trailer. Yeah. Wasn't a lot of room to be inside. <laughs> yeah. Well, our house was being renovated. We had to live in the travel trailer. But we stayed outside and it, it was about this time of year that we moved. And so we know that when you were about three years old, spent lots of time getting dirty. <laughs> yes, we did. And we moved into eventually when we finished our house, it was an 1880s German rock house that had no man-made materials in it. It was just uh, plaster and rock. Mm -hmm. And Margaret's room was upstairs, a very minimal amount of electricity, yeah. no central heat and air. But that is where she lived from about you know, three years old, and kind of very, when you say, uh, lots of in tune with the outside temperatures. Yep. Yeah. So, um, we know you played outside, and um, then after we moved into the house, I'd say within a week, we had gotten chickens. Mm -hmm. And so, Margaret, I know, played with chickens constantly, and chicks. Yeah, we probably traumatized them. Right. It's a lot of playing with chickens. Right. She loved them and she and they got ducks. So then within about a year, we had gotten a Jersey milk cow. Mm -hmm. And so Margaret was on, you know, you had raw milk lots in mm -hmm. your childhood. Um, and we were, we saw the whole family's health improve from having raw milk. So we had fresh eggs, raw milk, and then we started raising cattle. So we had our own beef. And then Margaret, also we would butcher our own, ch our own chicken. Mm -hmm. So you helped with that. Yep, lots of plucking feathers. Yes. So she was, uh, when you say, very exposed to being, you know, in nature. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you had some goats at one time. Yeah, we yeah. did. And then Margaret went to a two-room schoolhouse the last Commonwealth School District in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I believe you were the only one in your grade? From about the second half of kindergarten all the way up to third grade, I believe, yeah. Okay, so that was a, a German schoolhouse. So that didn't really have a lot of modern things, right? A lot of, <laughs> no, no, a lot of cutting all. edge computers. Mm -hmm. um, she did they didn't have athletics. She played kick the can, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we'd recess three times a day, 
can you tag. You play in, in lunchtime with family stuff. Mm -hmm. And yep. you each had chores. Now this is a public school, <laughs> which is amazing. So Margaret went to school there. And then, you know, one thing that's amazing is tell them where you go to college and what your degree is in. I'm a Texas A&M student in civil engineering. So I think, you know, Margaret went to, was the only one basically in the class, <laughs> so it was a really good education. So we've kind of painted a picture of Margaret's really in touch with the natural world, animals getting dirty, mm -hmm. ran it barefoot like crazy everywhere. Yep. And then she's in a, a school that has a lot of um, structure mm -hmm. and really high academics. So, um, you know, we think, and, and she has gone on to a and and is doing really well there. So at this school, um, you had to bring your lunch. Everything mm -hmm. you ate had to come from home. And so, you know, I sent everything that she had had. So that was very super rest. Well, then when she, you get, this school ends at eighth grade. So um, eventually you have to go to a larger school. So when she started going to a larger public school, mm -hmm. Uh, she was involved in athletics and very yep. busy and so what we did is we you know you took your lunch you took a lot of popcorn mm -hmm. on the athletics events and she was a golfer so um, I would bring your lunch up there and meet you just about every day when you were you know little and mm -hmm. then when you were in high school she would come home so you know we made sure that most of her food not a hundred percent that we provided um, and that meant food on the go that was easy and mm -hmm. good containers because yep. that was a big deal like when you're on a school bus. So we think, you know, that helped no more. This was not perfect. We just, you know, did our best. So I always um, did try to provide the best made from scratch food, you know, that I could. Okay, so now we're kind of looking at Margaret's getting older. She's still, you know, super healthy. Um, so some things that, you know, I think when you did get a cold, mm -hmm. or maybe I don't think you ever had the flu, but mm -mm. one thing that's kind of remarkable, I don't remember any of the five children ever having strep throat or the flu. So I don't really get like random food poisoning every now and then from eating out if we ever did or colds and that was probably the worst we ever got right i don't really remember ever having to you know sit by your bedside mm -hmm. because you no said, never i don't even think when any of you were babies we did so we you know so through school and high school you stay pretty healthy but mm -hmm. you did like you were you ate a lot of you drank a lot of smoothies mm -hmm. and we you're really into bone broth yeah, I guess usually I would have like an egg for breakfast and then come home at lunch and have a smoothie and then come home right before golf practice and eat like some toast with peanut butter or something healthy like that and then go to golf or go to tennis or whatever and then come home and eat dinner. Okay. So one of the main things that, you know, that we try to, that we try to provide or for the kids is the proteins, like the fresh eggs. Mm -hmm in our own grass-fed beef and of course raw milk that mm -hmm. is probably the center yeah. of um, our household on food because every we had a raw milk dairy for several years in texas and so um, that's what we're kind of all about raw milk so margaret um so then she graduated and she won an award for missing no no missing any days mm -hmm. and so we thought that was just amazing so then she's gone to Texas A&M and she's in her third year at Texas A&M. And we weren't really knowing because we were living in a really small town and farm what would happen when she was really exposed to mm -hmm. international, very large <laughs> 60,000 population, you know, uh, campus. But um, you lived in the dorm mm -hmm. and you really just really had no more than little colds or yeah I mean it's very easy to get a cold if you're on a college campus because everyone lives in such close quarters but I never got anything very bad just random colds and they've usually passed over pretty quick mm -hmm. and so today she has left the dorm she lives in um, an apartment which mm -hmm. when she was in the dorm 
you really you know, food was hard because you had a kept yeah food. you didn't uh, have like a pantry or anything and I would do the best I could but it right. still had to go eat down in the lunch rooms and stuff and right. you just did the best you could with what you had right and so then when she moved in the apartment sometimes when uh, I, I know that like at some holidays she will come and uh, do some fermented foods mm -hmm. like mason jars and take all that back with her mm -hmm. and try to make you know some things that she can pop in the freezer but of course she always has you know our beef mm -hmm. we best that we can provide the beef with her but it is really hard because she does study all the time and she is super busy so some you know i think we can some bone broth mm -hmm. that you could just like make some quick ramen yeah and then popcorn mm -hmm. which is about is a really good healthy snack as long as you, you know, make it on the stove top and you have anything like any do you do some essential oils a little bit yeah i have a um, diffuser in my room and all i have one that's kind of more centered on focus and i put that on whenever i want to study and i have a sleep one and then if i start feeling like i'm getting a cold i have kind of a cold blend and I pretty much have that going 24 seven in my apartment just cause it's healthy and it smells good. Yeah. It's kind of fun. So, you know, I stress, you know, I always stress resting. Mm -hmm. And then I do when she does not feel well, well in high school when she was here, we would take a little tonic mm -hmm. and apple cider vinegar. Well, our whole family does that, but so far so good. Yeah. But you know, little tonics and little, elderberry you know um, syrup we try that but when you don't feel well um, we try to just eat foods that are easy to digest um, just mm -hmm. like some bone broth and not much heavy food or not and margaret doesn't eat many grains mm -hmm. hardly at all yeah so um and we are really in the sourdough and you know she's learning so <laughs> anyway we're working on that um but anyway do you uh have anything that you think would, you know, you've really dodged having to take antibiotics, mm -hmm. which is really amazing. And we would take them, it's just that you haven't needed them. No, nope, not at all. And so, um, yeah, we're definitely not giving any medical advice. We just are trying to share. Um, Margaret has seemed to, and her younger brother Sutton, have really done well on staying uh, high attendance at public school. and. Mm -hmm staying healthy so do you have anything that might help some college students <laughs> maneuver a uh, very very stressful lifestyle i definitely feel like if you can ferment ferment because like I, i've figured out how to make sauerkraut in my apartment and i'll make that or fermented green beans and i did kombucha for a while and kombucha is a little harder to keep up with because you have to make it every week but like sauerkraut I think that's one of the reasons I never got sick when my roommates were is I would make ramen and then I would put sauerkraut in it or some fermented green beans with some kind of seasoning to make it really hot and I never really get sick very often um, even when I know that my other classmates are, have colds going around. So fermenting is yeah definitely a very helpful skill to know. Um, just because it's so easy once you've made it, it lasts a really long time and you don't have to do it very often, which works for me because I have a really busy schedule. Um, it's hard to keep up with something you have to do weekly or daily or... Right. Mm -hmm. And if you could, you would have a milk cow. Yeah. <laughs> we, we did ask about that. But you know, kefir, you do buy some kefir, mm -hmm. some organic, and you do, when you shop, you do buy organic, right? Yeah, what I usually do is I stop in the natural grocery just on the way to school. That's about my halfway point. And anything that I can't really take with me from here that's not as easy, I'll go grab like dried fruit and I'll take that for my lunches and I'll grab a big thing of kefir and that lasts for a really long time. And some, if it's not our season to have milk cows, I'll grab some cheese and yogurt and whatnot. And I make a lot of big pots of black beans and rice and stuff like that. It's just easy and keeps in your refrigerator for a week or so. Well, you're doing something right. Trying to. One thing she does is when she is home in May, she usually spends the whole month milking mm -hmm. cows. 
and picky blackberries. So, yeah. um, and we try when she's home to get her in the fresh air mm -hmm. and to go, you know, be in touch with nature and to, you know, play with her cats. Mm -hmm. Kind of my reset. Right. <laughs> but for sure in May, we keep her busy. But that's good to be exposed to mm -hmm. the milk cows and, uh, and, you know, the gardening mm -hmm. situation. Yeah, I'll make cheese and I take that with me. Yeah. And pesto is really nice too. It's, we'll have a garden full of basil every summer and I'll freeze a bunch of that and I'll make zucchini noodles and pesto mm -hmm. for dinner. And that's really easy and really good and fresh and healthy. Well, I appreciate you sharing and hopefully it'll help some other college mm -hmm. students out there. And thank you for watching this video. Uh, you're at the Seasons of Living and I hope we've shed a little information that that might help you remember you it's perfection is uh, exhausting you just do the best you can and and we are not perfect and mm -hmm. not at all but just a few little changes it seemed to make a really big difference and you know i think 80 20 is kind of our mm -hmm. rule. you do yeah. the best you can with 80 and 20 percent you just don't worry about it because stress is really harmful to the body mm -hmm. From our Texas Hill Country Farmstead, have a blessed day and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.